How to Sew a Trio of Nesting Tubs by Amber Makes. Available in a choice of prints, make this beautiful set of nesting tubs. Follow me and I'll show you how to make them. They're really easy. Cutting out. Take the panel from your kit and give it a press. You can see all the pieces for all three tubs are printed on the panel with the label for each one printed above. All you need to do is cut round the outer edge of each of the pieces and pin the label to the top edge of the right side of each one. All the seam allowances are included, so it's really easy to just cut them out, but don't forget to label them so you remember which is which. You will also need some wadding as well. The measurements for this are in the instructions. So now I've cut out all the pieces. These are the pieces for the small tub. Put them into a pile for all the pieces for the small, medium and large tub. So you've got the body outer, the base outer, the body lining, the base lining and the binding. That's the medium tub and these are all the pieces for the large tub. So you can see I've pinned the label to the top edge of each of them and the binding strip as well. Then cut out the wadding into the pieces using the measurements listed in the instructions. So there's the, you'll need a piece for the outer and the base so the small, medium and large, and put those all to one side. Quilting the tub outer. Place the body outer and the base outer right side up onto all their corresponding wadding pieces. Press them into place or tack them if you're using fusible or tack if you're using non-fusible. Make sure you place them in the centre of each piece. Once you've done that, you can then quilt them. This adds extra detail, but it also adds structure to the pieces as well. You can quilt them in whatever pattern you choose, using vertical or horizontal lines or following the pattern on the print. You can see with the bases, I've quilted eight lines. With the bodies, I've quilted vertical lines that run down through the body. But this is entirely up to you. Just use a longer stitch on your machine and sew through the fabric and the wadding to add these quilting details. Making the body. Take your quilted body outer and fold it in half with right sides facing so the short raw edges are matching and pinned together. Now all the tubs are made in exactly the same way. I'm showing you here how to make the large tub. So all you need to do is repeat this to make all the tubs in the same way. So once you've pinned the short edges together, making sure the raw edges are matching, sew together to join them. And then it will look like this. Open it out and press that seam open and flat. Now take the body lining and in the same way fold the short ends together so they're, raw, so they're matching and right sides facing and pinned together. You can take the labels off as you're doing this because you won't need them once you've started constructing. Now sew this together along that short edge. Once you've sewn it Open it out and press the seam open and flat. Now we're going to find the halfway points. So fold it so the seam is on the right hand side and then make a little crease. You can just do that with your finger or an iron just to find the halfway point and then put a pin in at the top and at the bottom. This makes joining the outer and the lining together easier and neater because you can, you've got anchor points to match them. Repeat this with the out body outer. So again, fold it in half so the seam is on the right hand side and everything is laying flat. Pop a pin at the top on the fold and then at the bottom and that marks the halfway points of the top and the bottom edge. I'm just going to readjust the pins so they're in nice and neatly and they stay in place on the right side. Now turn the body outer right sides out. Take the body lining and place it inside. They need to be wrong sides facing. So match up the seam on the body outer with the seam on the body lining and pin together at the seam at the top. Then push the lining inside and match up the seams on the bottom edge. Make sure those seams match up exactly. You'll just get a neater, more even finish. Now you can match up those halfway points. 
So match up the pin that you placed on the body lining to the pin that you placed on the body outer and pin them together. And when you do this, make sure that the raw edges are matching as well. And then repeat that on the bottom edge so that you're matching up the two pins. Again, make sure the raw edges are matching. Now you just need to pin them together between those pins. Because the body outer has been quilted and it's got all the stitching in it, it pulls the fabric in a little bit. But the fabric pieces are the same size so they will fit. But you'll find that you just need to pull it a little bit. And this is why we match it up on the halfway points first because it's the anchor points and it means that the lining will lie nice and flat inside the outer. When you pin them together, always make sure that the raw edges are matching along the top edges. Once you've done that, you can pin it together along the bottom. Again, if you pull the, the outer fabric and the lining so that they are the same size, it just opens up the quilting a bit because the quilting does pull it in a little bit. Make sure the raw edges are matching. And now you can be sure that the lining isn't twisted at all and is lying nice and flat inside the outer. Make sure that they're wrong sides facing, obviously, so that you've now lined the body. Once you've done that, tack them together within the seam allowance all the way around the top edge and all the way around the bottom edge using a longer stitch on your machine. So now you can see that the body outer is fully lined with the body lining. And this is now ready for the next stage. Binding the edge. Take the binding strip and fold one short end over by quarter of an inch to the wrong side. If you measure half an inch in from the edge, then you can fold that over by a quarter of an inch. Now press it into place, either just using your fingers like this, or you can use an iron. Once you've done that, fold the whole binding strip in half lengthways with wrong sides facing, so that the right side is on the outside. Press it together all the way down the length, because we're going to bind using a double fold binding. Once that's done, your binding strip will look like this. The double five binding adds extra strength. Now take the top of your body outer, the top edge, and place the binding right sides down on top, near the seam that joined them, but just a little bit further away, about half an inch. It just means that the seams are at the back, but reduces bulk by not having them on top of each other. Now pin or clip the whole binding strip around the top edge, making sure you match the raw edges of the binding with the raw edge of the top of the body, like this. The reason that I'm pinning it this way to the body outer is because I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to slip stitch it in place to the body lining. So this is why we start on this side. By having the binding folded in half like this, so it's a double fold binding, it's a little bit thicker and gives extra strength and structure and durability to your tub. So make sure that it matches all the way around the top edge. I'm using fabric clips just because there's quite a few layers. You can use pins if you prefer. When you get back to where you started, the binding strip is a little longer than needed. Overlap it on top of the folded under end and then just trim it. It needs to overlap by about a quarter of an inch or a little bit more. But I've made it a little bit longer just to help it for fitting. Now once you've pinned it into place or clipped it all the way around, you can see the edges are overlapped. Stitch it into place using a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around. And then it will look like this. So you've now bound the top edge. So fold the binding upwards, away from the body outer, and press it. Press it upwards and that will help keep it in place. And then turn the whole body wrong sides out so the lining is on the outside. Now fold that binding over so it just covers the seam that you've just worked. So just a little bit over because you want that seam to be covered but you don't want it to be too overlapped. The binding has been calculated so that it will overlap just a little bit. It's a little bit wider. Once you've done that, pin it into place all the way around so you can see I've just covered the seam that I've just worked. Now, I'm going to slip stitch this in place by hand just because I think you get a neater finish, but you can top stitch it if you prefer. So to do this, if you want to slip stitch, use a matching thread and push the needle up through 
anywhere you want. You can start anywhere you like. I'm starting near the folded under ends. And then push your needle under the lining and then back into the binding. Make sure you don't go through to the outer, only into the lining. When you reach the edge that you've turned under, I work a few small stitches just along the turned under edge. I just find it help, helps to keep that in place. So the aim here is that you are stitching just the folded under edge of the binding to the lining of the body. So you can see in this place, I'm just sewing that turned under edge. I'm sewing up to the top and then back down. Do check as you're sewing to make sure that your stitches don't come through to the outer side because they need to be invisible. And if you push your needle under to make a long stitch, bring it up just on the folded edge and then make a short vertical stitch back into the lining, you'll get a neat finish. So I've now slip stitched all the way around. And when you get back to where you started, just work a few small stitches on top of each other like this and that will secure the thread and stop it from coming undone. Obviously, if you want to top stitch by machine, all you have to do is stitch all the way around close to the edge of the binding. Snip off the ends of the threads and then turn it right sides out. And if you now bound the top edge of your tub and it looks really neat with its matching binding. Attaching the base outer. Take the body that you've bound the top of and fold it on half on the bottom edge with the seam on one side and mark the fold on the other side. This marks the halfway point on the bottom edge. Now take that mark that I've marked with a pin and place it so it faces the seam so that the seam and that mark line up and then mark the fold on the right hand side and then the fold on the left hand side and that marks the quarter points. So you've divided the bottom of the tub body into quarter points. This helps with positioning the base outer. Now take the base outer and fold that in half. Make sure all the raw edges match up and then mark with a pin the fold on one side and then mark the fold on the other side and those are your halfway points. Now, if you open it up and place those two pins together, so the two halfway marks together, mark the fold on the right hand side. And then mark the fold on the other side. You've now divided the base outer into four equally spaced portions. So those are your quarter points. This makes the positioning and joining much easier. So turn the body so it is lining side out, so wrong side out, so that you've got the outer on the inside. Place the base outer inside and match up the quarter points. So match up the two pins, one on the base, one on the body. And work all the way around matching these up. One of these, the halfway point, the quarter points on the body won't be marked because this is the seam. You don't need to put a pin there because that's the seam. So what you're doing, these are anchor points and it makes sure that when you are joining the body to the base, then it's equally spaced. So you can see there that we're matching up the seam. So whenever you're joining a circular shape to a straight edge, you need to divide it like this in half or quarters or eighths, depending on how big it is, because then you can make sure it's evenly spaced. Now, all you need to do is pin them together between these two quarter points. So making sure the raw edges are matching up, pin the two pieces together. You may find that you get round to another quarter point and you've got a little bit too much fabric of one or the other. But if you just go back and readjust it, that helps. Another way to do it if you really are struggling is you can make small snips into the bottom of the body outer, just a little less than a quarter of an inch. This helps to open it up. But I found when I was pinning these in, whether it, whatever size of the tubs, that they actually pin together really neatly. Once you've pinned it together all the way around like this, making sure there are no little tucks or pleats, sew it together all the way around the edge. And this is what it will look like then. Once you've sewn it together using your quarter inch seam allowance, you've now attached the body outer to the base outer all the way around the bottom edge. 
attaching the base lining. We're now going to sew the base lining into place and this will cover all the seams. It's a way of you having really neat inside without any raw edges showing and without having to have bound edges as well. So what you need to do is paste, place the base lining and the base out of right sides facing. In order to do that, you have to squash down the body outer. So if you start matching the raw edges, so you've got the base lining and the base outer right sides facing, and start by pinning it together around the edges. Just match up the raw edges. Now they're exactly the same size, so they will fit. Once you get a little bit of the way around, you've got to fold down the body and squish it inside. Because it's only got wadding inside, this is really easy to do. So all I did was just pinned it together and then just squished it down. The only thing you need to make sure of is that as you're pinning, make sure that the main body of the body doesn't get caught in this pin seam. You want it to, to be lying nice and flat. You might also find it easier to pin a little bit further round, sort of halfway round, and then pin back to where you started. It Just by doing that, it helps to keep it squashed inside. So as you're pinning, just ease your fingers across the fabric of the body to make sure it's lying flat so it's not as tucked or doubled back into this seam. And then pin it together, because if you've pinned it, making sure that it's not creased into the seam, it will stay like that when you sew it. So just make sure that the body's lying flat, just like this, and then pin it into place. This will just make sure that everything, your whole tub is really neat and you haven't got any raw edges inside. I found that this was the easiest and neatest way to make it nice because it's got a printed inside. Depending on what you're going to keep inside, you might be looking inside all the time, so you want this seam nice and neat. So just work your way gradually around, pinning it together, and as I said, the most important thing is to make sure the raw edges match and that the body is laying flat in the pin section. Now, once you've pinned it together all the way around, you've got to mark a turning gap because you need to turn it right sides out in here. The turning gaps are a different size for each of the tubs. So if you just take a look at the instructions, you can see what the turning gap size is for the tub that you're making. For this large tub, I'm going to mark one side of the turning gap with an erasable pen just so that I remember to stop and start stitching. And then I'm going to measure four inches. So if you just take your tape measure, it doesn't have to be exact, but roughly four inches and then mark that. You can use a pen to mark these or you could just use a different colour pin as long as you remember what's the start and finish. Then stitch together, starting at one side of the turning gap, stitch all the way round and finishing at the other. Don't stitch across the turning gap and remember to reverse stitch at either end of this seam. Once you've done that, you can then turn the whole tub right sides out through this turning gap. Do this nice and carefully because you don't want to break any of the seam that you've just worked. But if you, as long as you work carefully, it will all come outside. So now you can see that the lining inside has enclosed all of those seams nice and neatly. And all you've got left is the turning gap, which needs stitching closed. So just push out all the edges, making sure it's neat. And then if you take the lining, the tub lining, and just fold under the raw edges of the turning gap section of that by quarter of an inch. You can just do this with your fingers, it's just to hold it in. So if you just turn that under, you can then pin that on top of the body, making sure those edges of the base lining stay turned under. Pin it into place so it just covers the seam, the seam that you worked when you joined the body to the base outer. So make sure that the edge, raw edge stays turned under of the lining and that it just covers the seam. So this is the only section now of the tub that will have any turning gaps. And because that's inside, you won't see it. And we're going to stitch it neatly closed by hand in a moment. And it means that your tub will look just as nice from the outside as the inside. And it also means that your tub is reversible if you want it to be. So take some matching th sewing thread. And on one side of the turning gap, just push your needle through the lining fabric and out on the seam and work a couple of small stitches on top of each other so that they don't come undone. The important thing here is that you, these stitches are only worked through the lining of the body and the lining of the base and not through the outside at all. And this just keeps a neat finish. Push the needle a little bit of the way along the body and out through the lining, so the base lining. 
and work a small horizontal stitch, vertical stitch back into the body lining and then into the base lining. So that all you will see on the outside are these little vertical stitches and the long stitches are worked underneath the lining fabrics, but not actually all the way through to the outer fabrics. So continue stitching all the way along until you get to the end like this. When you get to the other end of the turning gap, work two or three stitches on top of each other just to secure the thread. And then you can trim it off and you can see now that that turning gap is neatly stitch closed. So now you can turn your tub right sides out, push out the base just to make sure that the seam that joined the body and the base together is right on the edge. What I do now is I, using my iron, I press it all the way around, just adjust it so that you press that seam so it lies right on the edge and the tub stands up better. So there's your large tub now finished. It's all lined, it's bound at the top and ready to fill with whatever you want to put inside it. And there's the small tub and the medium tub. So you can see they're all matching. They're all made in exactly the same way. The only thing is different, as I said, is that turning gap measurement. And that's finished. And if you want to store them, they all are designed so they nest beautifully inside each other. And there's your trio of nesting tubs all finished. <laughs>